Hey boys and girls, this is Mrs. Rotundi, and I am going to show you how you can put together your own clock if you need to put together a paper one to use at home for your math. So on the Parents Materials Guide, we're going to have a link for you to go to a template so that you can print out a clock on your printer at home. So I already did that. I printed out this clock face and then it had the minute hand and the hour hand. Your template might look a little bit different than mine, but that's okay. So I cut out the clock face, and then I glued it onto a paper plate just to make it a little sturdier. Then I took and I cut out my minute and my hour hands, and then I actually glued these onto some index cards and then cut them out again to make them a little more heavy duty because the paper was really thin and would like rip when you try to move it around. Then I have a thumbtack because I found that in my um, toolbox. You might need to use like a little um, nail or something like that that you can find around that you could poke into this paper plate. So you might have to get creative with that. Then I also have, in case you need these, I had some little tiny post-it notes. You could cut up post-it notes if you have bigger ones to make them kind of tiny, and I'll show you how I use those in a minute. So I've glued, I cut out and glued on my clock face. Then I was going to take my hour and my minute hands. I actually took and um, used a hole puncher, like a handheld hole puncher to punch the holes there so that they'll have plenty of room to wiggle around. Because at first I tried just sticking my thumbtack through it and it didn't work so well. So I took my thumbtack and just went through the hour hand, through the minute hand, and then I poked it right into the middle there. So doing this with the back of the plate where it kind of humps up here in the middle means that the sharp part is poking down here but it's not going to be poking into your table or anything but you need to watch out for that I tried using a hammer and smashing it down but then it was so tight here that I couldn't really move my hour hand and my minute hand so you might need to play around with that a little bit and see if you can get it to bend down without being too tight or if you also need to leave yours just exposed like I did and it's kind of protected by the plate hill making a hill there so then on my clock face here, you can see that it just has the hours. It doesn't have the minutes. So if you are still working on remembering the minutes for each of these numbers, you might want to make your little post-it notes that you could put on here. So we're counting by five minutes as we go around to each one of these numbers. So we start at zero or the o'clock. Then one is five because one times five is five. Two times five is 10. Three times five is 15. Four times five is 20. Five times five is 25. 6 times 5 is 30, 7 times 5 is 35, 8 times 5 is 40, 9 times 5 is 45, 10 times 5 is 50, and 11 times 5 is 55. And if we came back to 12 times 5, we get to 60, which makes a whole hour. So we're back to our double zero there for the o'clock. So I would recommend if you're just still reviewing the minutes for these, practice some with the minutes on here to help you. If you get to a point where you're pretty confident with your minutes, go ahead, take those back off and start doing finding the hour and the minutes without these reminders on here because you do want your student or you want you to get to the point where you can do the minutes without having any reminders because not every clock that you see is going to have those reminders on there. Okay, so that's just how 
I made my little clock when I um, adjust my time one here. Since I don't have this secured in, I do have to hold it down while I move my hour hand. Let's see, maybe I'll make it 1230, so I'll be like halfway between 12 and 1. And then I've got my minute hand there. Okay, so I had to kind of hold that down while I moved it around. But for me, that worked better than bending it down and then getting it stuck so I couldn't even move it at all. But you might want to play with the materials that you have and see what you can do that best works for you and your clock. So there we go. Also, um, on other videos, I'm going to show you an online clock that you can use. So you don't have to make one at home if you don't want to. That's totally fine. You can use the clock that's on the computer online, or if you have a analog clock like this at home, maybe you could just take it off the wall and um, practice moving it around that way. Um, not everybody has an analog clock at home though, I know about that. So anyway, those are my tips, and go check out my next video so you can see our notes about telling time and also about the clock that is online.